All right, so have you ever wondered what it's like to drive in the Pittsburgh area? Well, you're in the right place. My name is Mark McClinchy. I'm a real estate agent in the Pittsburgh area. So I've been doing these videos lately where I'm just recording some of my normal business drives around town. And currently, uh, for those of you who might not be familiar, we are in the small town of Carnegie, Pennsylvania. So not Carnegie, but Carnegie. And great little town, lots of nice little shops and restaurants, coffee shops, things like that. So we are in Carnegie and I'm gonna do a drive over to Upper St. Clair, going to my office uh, at Siena in Upper St. Clair. So you're just gonna come along for the ride and you will see exactly uh, what it's like on this route to get from one part of Pittsburgh, sort of, you know, Carnegie's kind of hard to describe. It's not really South Hills, it's not really West Hills, but uh, it's kind of, you know, it's right off of the parkway, you look on a map, um, but it's pretty convenient. You get to the airport really quick, get out to Robinson, get into town really quick. So, you know, it's an older town, you know, like a lot of towns in the Pittsburgh area, Western Pennsylvania, sort of a, um, you know, industrial town that, you know, when all the industry left, you know, and the jobs left, the economy went south and these towns were, were kind of struggling. But I will say Carnegie is really pretty vibrant. You know, it's really built itself back up with a vibrant a business district that's really the heart of the community. Um, and then the residential areas that surround Carnegie. There's not as much residential within the town as you can see. We're on Main Street here and we're just kind of plugging along um, and seeing a lot of storefronts and things like that. And, and the, the town itself, or the, I mean, excuse me, the residential areas themselves are kind of in the surrounding areas, you know, over here to my right and over here to the left. Um, and we'll drive through an area up here in just a moment. So we are going to go through a couple, you know, sort of South Hills communities. We'll be going through parts of Scott Township, parts of Mount Lebanon, and then we'll get over to Upper St. Clair. Um, this is near the end of March when I'm doing this drive. This is a Tuesday. It's around noon. So, you know, we're not really in sort of morning rush hour or afternoon rush hour, but just middle of the day which can be kind of busy, you know, at times people are on their lunch breaks and things like that, or, you know, people just commuting from one area around. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna be on any highways. Um, a lot of people kind you know, like to say that maybe the South Hills, which is kind of where we're at, um, is a little more congested than the North Hills. I don't know that that's terribly true having lived in both areas. Um, you know, some of it's just a matter of, you know, your personality or perspective, you know, see the glasses half full or half empty. Um, I think generally that's the one thing I love about the Pittsburgh area that getting around is super easy and, you know, super convenient. You know, a lot of bigger cities, you know, you just never visit a lot of the, you know, you sort of, if, particularly if you're in a suburb, you kind of remain on that side of town. You don't get out very much uh, because you're just, you know, so boxed in by whatever side of town you're in. You would never think of going to the opposite side, you know, if you were in Philadelphia or, you know, DC, just in your daily runnings around. Um, but here in Pittsburgh, like, yeah, it's, I think it's super easy to get from one side of town to the other. Um, so we're coming, you know, this is again, a part of, of Carnegie. This is a little more of a residential area. And we're gonna go left up here on 3rd Street. Get head over toward 50. Um, but yeah, they've done a nice job of, of keeping everything. Um, you know, it's got the character of, of a small town. You know, it's certainly not at any stretch, um, you know, gentrified in my opinion. You know, it's still got like its old school roots. And the real estate is generally very, very reasonable in Carnegie. Um, so now we are leaving Carnegie, heading into Scott Township. Uh, and we will head over toward Swallow Hill. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, if you look in the description of this video, you'll see a link that will show you the exact drive that I took in case you want to follow along and, you know, kind of get a visual. I'm a visual person, so I mean, it's helpful to kind of see what I'm driving at and see what it's like, you know, going through. But if you're curious as to, you know, how many miles I'm driving and how many minutes Google says it would take, um, I think it's going to be about a 15 minute drive total from beginning to end about that. I sat at that one light for a while, so that might have added an extra minute or two. Um, but like I said, this is Scott Township. Scott Township's a great little community as well. I've done other videos on my channel about Scott Township, but this is Washington Avenue, more commonly referred to as, as Route 50 East and West. To my right um, is Heidelberg, small little community. Uh, cute little town. It's it's a nice little town. Very very small, much smaller than Carnegie. But Heidelberg's to my right, and then if I would have gone left back there, that would have gone back to Carnegie. So this is Swallow Hill um, that we're on now. It's a nice little. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of back roads generally when you're getting around um, anywhere in Pittsburgh, and there's usually plenty of ways to get there. The old adage is, you know can't get there from here uh, which I don't know where that comes from but you know because you can sometimes see off in the distance with all of our hills and valleys and rivers and bridges and tunnels um, you kind of know at least on a map you know where you want to get to but you know there's not usually a straight shot we definitely do not have a grid system uh, far from it we have the exact opposite of a grid system in the Pittsburgh area lots of windy roads like we're following a creek to our right uh, we're just sort of winding through this little valley. For some reason, this car ahead of me is going very, very slow. Maybe they're sightseeing. Maybe they're giving a tour. Uh, and they're busy talking like I am. But we are heading over to... Um, toward Mount Lebanon. I'll try to point out some different things along the way. Um... But again, this is sort of the heart of Scott Township um, that we're coming up to. We'll be crossing over Green Tree Road um, because if you would take Green Tree Road, eventually you would get to Green Tree. Uh, if we go right at this intersection that we're approaching, um, we would head out toward, uh, head back toward 50, but you'd head out toward I-79. You'd hit the Bridgeville area. Um, Bridgeville's a nice little town as well sort of the same size as probably Carnegie uh, if we go left here on Green Tree Road we'd head over toward Mount Lebanon um, and then you know closer to the city of Pittsburgh so you know I, I sort of categorize this drive sort of coming from like the west I always try to go from like the north to the south or the east to the west you know, I don't do that many drives where we're just staying inside the same community because um, I want to try to show you uh, how to get around from one point to another. So this is sort of my, my attempt at somewhere in the West getting to the South Hills. Um, but I've done other drives as well. Um, you'll have to check out my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called Mark Knows Pittsburgh. Started it about four years ago. Uh, and the goal was to try to provide information about living in Pittsburgh and information to primarily out of, out of state or out of area residents who were moving or considering a move to the Pittsburgh area. And of course, when you're making a move to the Pittsburgh area, you know what? It is just really hard to find good information. You know, how do you find information about a new city? You know, yeah, maybe you end up in a Facebook group or a Reddit forum. You know, something like that, but that's not terribly reliable. Um, it's just random people saying random stuff, um, which I, you know, I guess you find that on YouTube as well. Uh, but I am not a random person. I am a real estate agent, and I know a lot about Pittsburgh. I know a lot of the neighborhoods. When you're a real estate agent, you, you know, you get a lot of experience. A lot of real estate agents, though, they build their business uh, around a very small geographic area. You know, they might specialize in one neighborhood or one community. But what was interesting is when I started my YouTube channel, 
uh, and really gearing toward out of state. A lot of my buyers didn't know where they wanted to live. Um, and so myself, having lived in a lot of different areas in Pittsburgh, it was great to share my own personal experience. But then my professional experience grew very, very rapidly, very quickly. And so now I really focus on, you know, just doing like neighborhood tours um, and talking about schools as a former principal. Um, you know, I try to put that type of content that is really hard to find. You know, you want to know what it's like to live in the North Hills or what this school district is like or that school district is like. I try to do that through my videos. Uh, and giving people useful content to become you know, a little more comfortable with, all right, here's this place that I might move to, let me learn about it. And so the YouTube videos have been really helpful. I'm also on TikTok uh, under Mark Knows Pittsburgh, and I try to provide uh, the same type of information on TikTok, just in a little shorter format. Um, so we just came down Swallow Hill, we're on scrub grass, we're gonna take a left on scrub grass here. And we'll head up into, we'll head up to Bower Hill Road <coughs> and get on, uh, and we'll head through Mount Lebanon. We'll be going through um, the St. Clair Hospital, going right by that major hospital in the South Hills. Um, but yeah, the, my, my channels uh, really far exceeded all the expectations I had going into it. Um, gotten some really positive comments. If there's any information, that would be more useful to you that if you looked around and you're not finding what you know you have questions that's what really it's it's just a starting point for people but if you are looking to to eventually move to Pittsburgh and you have no clue where you're going to be a lot of my clients you know they work from home now you know they're not as tied you know a lot of times people tie their location where they live obviously to maybe their employment and their employer and you know, not everybody works downtown anymore, so they might have the flexibility to to work uh, work from home, and therefore they can work anywhere. So they're looking for what's a nice community, and they tell me what they're looking for. Um, <clears throat> by the way, we're in Mount Lebanon, which happens to be the most popular uh, request that I get. Um, also happens to be where I live, so Mount Lebanon definitely. You know, I have a little bit of a bias that I'm probably most familiar and do the most business in this area. Um, it is a wonder, wonder, wonderful community. We're on Bower Hill. It is fairly big, it's 30,000 residents, so there's a lot of different, you know, unique neighborhoods within Mount Lebanon. It's really hard to paint with a broad stroke, you know, exactly what it's like to live in Mount Lebanon. You, you really have to, you know, go a little deeper into the specific neighborhoods. Um, so we're our, you know, we're over here in the Hoover area. Um, a little more of a newer, most of Mount Lebanon was really built up like in the 20s and 30s and 40s, sort of pre-World War II. Um, and that's when it grew the quickest. The section that we're in over here off of Bower Hill um, is probably, you know, ages in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Uh, a little bit of a different architecture as well. You know, kind of smaller homes than average. You know, your your median price point in this area is a lot more reasonable. A lot of times, people want to move to Mount Lebanon just because of the schools, and they want to send their kids uh, to what they believe is you know a great school system. Which I I think that's true. My kids have went through the Mount Lebanon system, and I still have our youngest in at the high school. We're super happy with the education our kids are getting in Mount Lebanon. Um, but the only, only, only pause that I give is, is around rankings. I have a video on my YouTube channel about, you know, why the ranking system uh, shouldn't be, you know, as va highly valued. I mean, it might be a starting point for you, but you're gonna tell me that the number two school district is qualitatively different than the number 23 school district. In my opinion, no, that's, kind of ridiculous and what you're really measuring is not school quality in that ranking system uh, you know oftentimes you're you're really ranking real estate values is what you're really doing um, and it's sort of the, the chicken or the egg you know and, and, and people follow those rankings and that becomes high demand and that pushes up real estate values um, which I don't know I don't you know it's an interesting being in this industry both as a former principal uh, in the area and now as a real estate agent, you know, because the, there certainly is a, a relationship 
and they're you know between real estate values and school districts uh, but some of that is just not borne out in in the data around because we don't have really good data what data do we have around you know teaching and learning uh, we have test scores but those are, are skewed and biased so we really don't really have good data on what makes a good school I mean same same is true about colleges right you know oftentimes you're substituting reputation and you're substituting people's you know sort of what they what they think something has um, and it's not really borne out by people's real experiences necessarily. You know, I could you know, go to the bottom 10 school districts and, and look to see, wow, these have amazing teachers and the kids all really work hard. Um, and, you know, they have great resources, but maybe, you know, for, for a lot of different reasons, a lot of complex reasons, mainly around institutional racism, to be quite frank. Um, you know, that's where we have a, a ranking system that, that is borne out in our, you know, socioeconomic issues in our country of, you know, structural inequality. But I digress. So we are sort of leaving Mount Lebanon. You know, we, we came down Kelso Road there. Um, and you saw a little bit of some of those homes on Kelso are, are you know, are great. They see, they pop up a lot uh, for sale. A lot of times they're quote unquote starter homes, entry level homes. You know, Mount Lebanon any any more, it's really hard to get in Mount Lebanon under 300. So you're looking in the low threes and that's kind of the area we are going in, but you get some great homes, but then people move in and then they want to upsize. Very popular for Mount Lebanon uh, residents to sort of move within Mount Lebanon. They get there and you know, the kids are little and then you know, maybe they, they move up uh, to a bigger home. So, but busy road homes are kind of tough to sell. So we're now on Fort Couch. We are in Upper St. Clair. And we'll be ending this video shortly as I pull up into Siena. Siena is a newer development. I don't know how long it's been there. Maybe, I don't know, four or five years possibly. Maybe longer. It has a Whole Foods. That's the anchor of the development. My broker is Compass Real Estate. And we have an office there. We've only moved in there maybe two years ago. Or a year and a half ago, I think I, right about the time I joined Compass, um, I came from Keller Williams. Um, when I joined Compass, they were just moving into this new office in Upper St. Clair. Um, but as we approach the, you know, the Fort Couch, we're going to be coming up. If you look on a map, we're going to be coming up to to Washington Road or Route 19, and that really is sort of the the heart, the hub of the South Hills because you've got. The South Hills Village, the shopping mall, which takes up a large portion uh, of the of the footprint of this area, and on that you've got um, you know it actually is the, the mall right through the the middle of the mall. You've got Bethel Park and Upper St. Clair that each own uh, you know I guess a part of of the mall. But you've got tons of grocery stores. You've got you know Whole Foods, which I mentioned, but you got Trader Joe's. You got Fresh Market, you got a huge giant eagle uh, called a Market District. Um, but yeah, lots of big box stores and restaurants, you know, sort of all, everyone in the South Hills, it's sort of the center if you need to get to, you know, Home Depot or the big state store or, you know, obviously a Target. Um, you know, all of that is up in this area. But I'm going to be pulling up over here in the Siena wrap up this video for you so you got a little bit of a glimpse of driving through the south hills and you know it wasn't super quick again it's not like getting on a highway but it was relatively easy we didn't you know we stopped at a few lights here and there but you know getting around the area is quite easy and this is the upper level of Siena got a couple different stores you've got a Hello Bistro which is owned by Eaton Park which is a big Pittsburgh franchise and then you've got compass down here at the end right here to the right so thanks for tuning in and I am just gonna come into my office do a little bit of work all right thanks everyone take care thanks see you in the next video